Most of us, I suspect, know what it's like to live life on the run. Some run from their past, trying to escape guilt, regret, failures. Some are trying to get away from pain, losses, and the brokenness of life. Some want to leave behind those parts of our lives we dislike. In today's scripture reading, we hear of Jacob, a man himself on the run. That is, until he encounters a ladder and comes to God. O God, who hast prepared for them that love thee such good things as past man's understanding, pour into our hearts such love toward thee, that we, loving thee above all things, may obtain thy promises, which exceed all that we can desire, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Jacob left Beersheba and went towards Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night, because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham your father and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and to your offspring, and your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid, and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning, and he took the stone that he had put under his head, and set it up for a pillar, and poured oil on the top of it. He called that place Bethel. Chris Childs has just read to us the well-known story of Jacob's ladder from the book Genesis. Let's just recap the context of this story and what is happening leading up to it. 
Isaac was an old man and was dying, and was going to give his blessing to Esau, but Jacob, Esau's brother, tricked his father into giving him the blessing instead. Esau, understandably, was livid about this, because he was to inherit nothing from Isaac as a result. So Esau says, The time to mourn my father's death is near, then I will kill Jacob. Rebekah, Esau and Jacob's mother, overheard what Esau said, and warned Jacob, and told him to go and stay with his uncle in Haran, until Esau's anger had cooled off. So Jacob leaves home and flees for his life, a life on the run. And that's where we pick up the story. He's running for his life, he is afraid, he's tired, he's guilty and feeling remorseful for what he has done. He's in a dark place. Essentially, he needs a healing experience from God. And this passage goes on to tell us something of what it means for us to receive that healing touch from God in our own lives and situations. Most of us, I suspect, know what it's like to live life on the run, running from the past and running into the future. Today, following a long pause, we can reassemble to worship as the church in public and return again to receiving the sacraments. In some ways, the sacraments are ladders, a points of intersection between heaven and earth, divinity and humanity. Let's return to Jacob. He is now left Beersheba, the people and the place that are familiar. He is not yet in Haran, the new place. He is in a place, an in-between place. This is where we are most vulnerable and open to seeing and hearing God in new ways. It's a place of darkness illumined by the unknown. It's a place of emptiness filled with presence and mystery. It's a place where physical eyes can no longer see. Dreams now lead the way. It's a hard place full of stones, yet it is a place of encounter and of grace. When the sun has set and darkness takes over, you can no longer go on. You can only stop and lie down. It's a point of surrender, but not a place of giving up. Here we can stop running from life ourselves, and more importantly, from God. The darkness teaches us that we are no longer in control of our own destiny. Now God can appear and speak. We see with new eyes and hear with new ears. It is in this place that Jacob encounters God, an awesome place, the house of God, nothing less than the gate of heaven. Jacob's ladder reveals the connection between heaven and earth, the created and the uncreated. The ladder Jacob saw was not in a physical location, it was within him. It was not a vision, but a dream. Through Jacob, God reveals that the ladder of his love, his life and his connection to us is found deep within ourselves. In time, this ladder would become reality, flesh, when God became man in Jesus Christ. Jesus, the eternal word made flesh, is the ladder, and at every step of our lives, through him, with him and in him, we encounter divine life, a place of healing and of new beginnings. Today marks a new beginning in our lives as we return to Mass. For some of us this is still not possible, as you remain indoors, protecting yourselves and others from the virus. This will be our final podcast for now. We will revisit our ministry via social media in the future, following a break. My thanks to all those who have participated and contributed to these podcasts, and especially to Father Philip, who has each week put many hours into their production. Hopefully they've been of some help and have enabled us all on a Sunday to be drawn into the worshipping life of the Church from our homes. Church buildings may well have been closed, but the life of faith, worship and prayer have continued. May God bless you all.
Like Jacob, we have been given a glorious hope and a future in Jesus. He is our ladder and route to heaven. Let us through him make intercession for the church and for the world. For the pilgrim people of God the world over, for the church in this diocese and for your people at St. Martin in Roth, as we return today for the celebration of the Mass, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who have listened to these weekly podcasts over the past three months, for all who have participated in their production, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the peace of the world and for the salvation of our souls in Christ, for those who govern and lead the world's peoples, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who serve the needs of the poorest, for all aid agencies, for those who seek peace among the nations of the earth, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our government and for the Welsh Assembly Government and the people of Wales, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all schools, colleges and places of learning, for those who work in the arts and for all musicians and choirs, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our families, neighbours and for those whom we shall meet or be in touch with during this week, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those whose lives are diminished by sickness or tragedy, may the mercy of God heal and sustain them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May the faithful departed know the grace and peace of paradise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving and merciful God, gather your people from every place into the community of your church. Nurture us, nourish us, heal us, feed us, and bless us now and always in the name of Jesus Christ. faith and in peace, let us pray to the Father as Jesus taught us. May God, the Father of glory, who has in Christ set up a ladder between heaven and earth, draw us all more and more into the radiant beauty of the divine life, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you always.